What's up, Internet? We've got some Mists of Pandaria beta here for you today. And the topic of uh, this video in particular is going to be twofold. First off, we have a look at the Stormstout Brewery instance, one of the first five mans you'll encounter in the new land of Pandaria. And it's also a look at the Mistweaver Monk Healing spec, because that is what I am running this dungeon as. Both are things that I've been looking forward to trying out for a while. So I figured I would take a little bit of time to talk about it. So the first thing to note is that uh, I'm sending a lot of green lightning at my enemies here. And that is because the Mistweaver class has a passive ability attached to their healing stance, the uh, stance of the Wise Serpent. And that ability goes by the name of Eminence. That uh, causes you to heal people around you for 50% of the damage that you deal. Uh, I'm not sure if it's you heal everyone or if it's just a smart heal or what, but uh, it works pretty good because, as you can see, I am zapping the bad guys with the lightning and healing my allies. You also have the ability to place down a serpent statue that has the same passive ability on it. So essentially you can heal your party for 100% of the damage that you deal. So dealing damage is pretty effective. In particular this uh, Crackling Jade Lightning ability its mana cost is a little bit buggy right now I think so it's actually really 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 cheap which is part of the reason why I'm doing it. It also has the ability to every tick has a 15% chance of giving you cheat which is of course uh, a resource that all monks want, much like a uh, paladin's holy power or a rogue's combo points. A little different, but very much the same. So that first room in there was pretty nondescript, nothing really important there. And this room we have a whole bunch of sleeping monkeys surrounded by explosives, which if you hit the monkeys, they explode, which is kind of amusing, but also completely unnecessary. It just kind of causes damage to your tank. Here we got a couple more of the same guys from before, so... For whatever reason, these guys are really low on health when you pull them. I guess they were supposed to be fighting or something. So, just continuing on, zapping stuff with lightning. That's not the only way I'm healing. Uh, I do have one other method, but I'll go into that in a little more detail in a bit. Here uh, you see where I'm using my uh, spinning crane kick ability, which is a short channeled AoE. It doesn't do very good damage, uh, even after they have given monks the a buff to their attack power, Mistweaver monks. Now they get 100% of their spell power they get as attack power. But even with that, spinning crane kick's damage seems to be pretty low. On the plus side, because it's an AoE, uh, your Eminence healing procs off of every single hit from the AoE, so it can be worth doing. Although at it costs 2 Chi, which can be kind of high. So after killing a few of these monkeys, they all stream out of the room, and a big one by the name of Ook Ook comes down. Uh, and on normal mode, this guy isn't too interesting. Uh, he has a Ground Pound ability that is kind of a, I believe it's a channeled cone attack that stuns people in front of them, so that's kind of annoying. But the biggest thing is what you can see here. Uh, these little barrels will come out from, I guess they fall from the ceiling, and you can jump on top of them and roll them into the boss. And uh, they can roll into you too if you happen to walk into one of them or something. Uh, they don't do a whole lot of damage. I think they only do like 10,000 to the boss. They do like 50,000 to you, which I don't know how that works, but... Uh, the biggest thing is that every time a barrel hits... I don't know if it stacks it on you, but there's a, a incoming damage debuff that the explosive barrels will apply, so... Uh, if you are running the barrels into the boss, the damage he takes should go up pretty quickly. Uh, you can see I just did a uh, lightning crit there for 32,000, whereas that's about twice as much as I would normally do. 
I believe. So that in particular that works uh, especially well with eminence since you know more damage also means more healing. Jeez. These uh, lightning ticks are healing for 10,000. That's pretty ridiculous. Other than that though, this really isn't a whole lot to this boss. He's pretty straightforward, nothing to worry about. So now I suppose I should probably mention the other thing. Oh wait, no, hold on. You can see in the bottom right there, that's that's my uh, jade dragon statue or Jade Serpent, Serpent Statue. That's the statue I was talking about previously. It, it also has the Eminence effect, so you can place one of those somewhere and heal people around the statue with your damage, and then also heal people around your actual character with your damage. You can stack them in the same place to heal for 100%, or you can stack them, the statue, somewhere else and heal two different groups for 50% each. So here we have a little bit of a gauntlet here, uh, although I don't think our tank has quite realized that yet. Uh, actually, I'm not sure where our tank is actually going. But anyways, these guys will keep coming. There's big, big little ver... I believe they're called vermings. There's big ones called hoppers. Or no, the big ones are called boppers, and little ones called hoppers. One of them explodes. I think it's the boppers. Uh but I'm not really sure about that. The biggest thing is that the, when you kill a bopper, it drops a hammer. And you can see a bunch of people doing a little bit of a, like a ground pound there. And that's what the hammer does. That's a really good way of killing off the little guys. Once people actually realize that's the way it works, this, these groups should be a little bit easier to deal with. So anyways, what I was saying was, uh, if you look really closely at the player frames, or uh, the party frame rather, You'll notice that every single person in this group has a little cloud buff on them. And that's an ability uh, for the Mistweaver called uh, Renewing Mists. Uh, basically, it's a heal over time that has the ability to spread to nearby injured allies. You can also apply it yourself, of course, uh, to individual people one at a time. But it will also jump to people uh, kind of like a smart heal. And more importantly, up, you can see I've, in the bottom there I've got a little icon. That's the hammer. I picked one of those up, so that's what that looks like. But anyways, uh, with Renewing Mists, monks also have an ability called uh, Uplift, which the effect of Uplift is it, anyone who has Renewing Mists, they receive a small heal, but more importantly, it also refreshes the duration of Renewing Mists on every single character. So you can basically have it your renewing mist is ticking on unlimited people and with uplift it's really easy to keep up so I'm basically for the almost the entirety of this dungeon like from pole to pole and between poles and all that uh, every single person is receiving about 8500, 8000 healing every single tick so that's pretty good it's really easy to keep up the healing isn't too bad and you can literally have it on everyone, so that makes it really easy to deal with incoming damage. So I suppose I should talk a little bit about this boss. Um, most of it, what he does is pretty obvious. You can see here he's doing a little bit of a whirlwind, uh, so you should probably stay away from that. He summons a whole bunch more of those adds that we fought in the gauntlet, and they function exactly the same. Uh, the little guys will just swarm you. They don't do anything at all dangerous. But the big ones will drop hammers, so you can use those to get the little guys off, which is uh, always handy. And the boss himself, you can see him doing here uh, a carrot breath, I believe it is. And that's pretty much like you would expect. It's uh, the lurker, be lurker below spout type ability. Uh, I don't think its damage is too high in normal mode. Uh, it's actually kind of tricky to dodge, just because it's uh, at least from my experience so far, just because when he does it is actually a little bit unpredictable. Towards the end of this fight here, people are getting a little bit low on health, and I'm not entirely sure why that is. I don't know if people are just getting sloppy or what, but we managed to pull it off just fine. I've done this fight a few times, and this is the only time where anyone's come even remotely close to dying, so I'm not 100% sure what's up, but yeah, whatever. 
so the the misweaver and the, the, at least the way they function currently it's pretty easy to keep everyone topped off just by rolling the renewing mists bu uh, buff on everyone so that they're constantly being healed over time and then using damage abilities to kind of cover whatever else damage people are taking with the eminence effect. Between the two of those, there aren't many situations, at least in normal five-mans. Uh, and I would say it also applies to the heroic five-mans from uh, Cataclysm that I've done. It's pretty easy to keep people topped up just between the two of those. Uh, monks currently have an ability called Expel Harm on an 8 second cooldown, which can be cast without a target or anything. And it does, uh, it's supposed to be like a self heal that is decently strong, I guess, and it also does a little bit of damage to a nearby target. But more importantly, you can cast it whenever you want, and it gives you a guaranteed one chi. So using that on cooldown, it's pretty easy to roll a renewing mists even outside of combat. Now, obviously, the Mistweaver has uh, healing spells outside of their ridiculous hot and their uh, damage over time, or not damage over time, but their damage healing stuff. Uh, their, I guess you'd call it their main heal, their equivalent of their kind of slow but effect or efficient heal, is uh, an interesting ability by the name of Soothing Mist. I've used it here a couple of times, but really not a whole lot. Uh, but basically, it's a channeled heal where you're, I mean, that pretty much says it all. It's a channeled heal. You're channeling it on a single person, and it charges you mana for every single tick. So it's, it's effectively the same as uh, a cast heal, except that it's channeled. You can break the channel at any time, and you're not increasing the mana cost of it or, at all because it charges you the mana for every single heal, uh, each heal individually. That's a pretty interesting mechanic, and Soothing Mist has a chance of giving you Chi as well. Uh, beyond that, the other thing that monks have is, I believe it's called Surging Mist, and that's kind of their flash heal ability. Uh, if you're, you're just straight up casting it, it functions pretty much the same as a normal flash heal. But if you're uh, channeling Soothing Mist at the same time, and you use Surging Mist, uh, then... Well, I mean, you can do that. Surging Mist becomes instant, and it doesn't interrupt the cast of Soothing Mist. So that's a really interesting way of kind of topping off the tank. It's just kind of like, I'm healing you already, you're taking a little bit of damage, quickly press the button, and you just get like a, an instant big heal. That's a pretty interesting in effect. So this area of the instance is pretty interesting. We're uh, encountering basically beer elementals. Several, uh, I don't know if all of them, but at least some of them are called Ailmentals, which is just a fancy name. And the interesting thing about these guys is, uh, much like the uh, rabbit things in front of the first, not the first boss, but the last boss, these guys do a pretty good job of introducing you to the mechanics that the next boss is going to have. Uh, these guys in particular have the ability to inflict something called Carbonization. Uh, and that is basically a silence. I believe it's also a pacify, so no no spell casting and no uh, melee attacks. And that's pretty annoying, especially since it seems like it's always cast on me. Although it seems like everyone else is getting it pretty frequently too. I'm not sure how you're supposed to deal with it on the trash. I don't know if you're supposed to just kind of sit there and eat it. That kind of seems to be the case. The biggest annoying factor for the trash... Uh, this particular trash on a Mistweaver is that uh, because you're uh, silent so often, it makes it pretty hard to maintain your uplift or uh, your renewing mist stacks. But because it's rolling on everyone pretty much always, it also means that you're never really going to be in danger of anyone dying, so to speak. So, uh, I su suppose I should talk a little bit more about other abilities the Mistweaver has. Um, one of the most interesting ones is a healing orb, which is an ability available to all monks. Uh, but the healing orb has changed a little bit over the past couple of patches, and what's interesting about its current function is that it's actually an instant cast ability, 
and it, it summons a little green orb that someone can walk through that will heal them. And it actually, I believe at this point, it doesn't have a global cooldown, or it has like a 0.5 second global cooldown. So when you're walking, you can basically just, uh, you can have three healing orbs up at once. So you can just walk, and within the span of a normal global cooldown, you can just plop down three orbs. At the moment, it's a little bit buggy. It's not, it's, uh, it doesn't have its intended functionality, I don't think. So it's actually really effective just because it heals for like 20k. It's really cheap, so you can just place them on top of someone and just heal them for a lot for really cheap. Which is interesting because it's an interesting mechanic because it's a targeted heal, so you have to use the little targeting reticule to just select where you're placing it. But I don't believe it's supposed to heal people uh, if it's summoned directly on top of them. So it's an interesting heal, uh, both in its intention and its current state. So anyways, here we have our f the final boss. This guy has a bunch of abilities that is actually a little bit confusing. Uh, but the bi one of the big things to know about this fight is that you should spread out. Uh, you might be able to see uh, the person who is standing beside me over there. They're uh, spewing a bunch of brown stuff out of their sides. And that's one of the boss's abilities. Uh, he will make people spew beer out of their ears. And I believe that does damage and a knockback. So it's a good idea to spread out. It seems like that's always on a couple of people, so... It's not too hard to spread out in this room. It's a pretty big room. Uh, the other thing you may have noticed... Uh, I'm, oh, I'm spewing beer out of my ears. Okay, so here he's casting Carbonization on people. At this point, I don't think I've really figured out how to deal with it. In the video, at least. Uh, but you can see all these bubbles around the room. The idea is, I've clicked on a bubble, you can see there's a bubble around me. I've almost got it. The idea is, you're supposed to click a bubble, and that bubble gives you the ability to fly. So if you click the bubble, go up in the air, kind of like I am right there, a little bit, uh, then you won't be affected by the carbonization effect. So, that's how you're supposed to deal with the silence. I don't think you can do that at all on the trash, but... That's how you deal with it on the boss, anyways. Easy enough. So one of the other things the boss can do is periodically he will summon, I believe, eight uh, bubble shields. And those just kind of uh, pop up all around him, and each bubble will... Oh, yeah, there, the, there we go. Each bubble will give the boss a 10% damage reduction. So with all eight bubbles active, he has a total of 80% damage reduction. So pretty straightforward. You just have to kill all the bubbles, which my party does not seem to have noticed quite yet. And uh, if you kill all the bubbles, the damage reduction goes away. So it's pretty simple. Really nothing too complicated on this boss, in normal mode at least. Uh, there's one final mechanic that I don't think we see in this footage, uh, and that's where he will summon two walls of suds that will come from uh, either side of the room. and when he's doing that, you get the uh, buff that allows you to jump, or uh, when you when you jump, it makes you jump really high. So the idea is you use that to jump over the walls of suds, which uh, is also pretty simple. I mean, if you don't know how this boss works, uh, in particular the carbonization effect can be a little bit confusing since it's not entirely obvious the way that's supposed to work. But other than that, it's a pretty straightforward boss, and it's easy enough that if you don't understand the mechanics, then chances are you're still not going to wipe, because it's just that easy. So, boss is just about dead. Down he goes. Now, I do have some footage of the sud wall uh, somewhere, so I will include that right here. <laughs> 